Back in the locker room with Punch and Wolf and a bow-legged Steve and Jim Wessel from Steel City Insider.com. <laughs> now, I, I said bold. I meant bow-legged. But anyway, oh, well, you're right. an immigrant. All right. you come I come to this country right. with nothing. I, I, I it happens in to England. play American football. Um, let's talk about the uh, uh, the offensive side of the ball. I mean. Got it. From uh, from the defensive standpoint, you'd like to have a big defensive line, and you pass rushers always. That's it. Well, they need a pass rusher or a cover man. I, right. They could take either one. Cover but corner. I'd hate to pass on the big man in the middle. All you know, right. a shutdown big defensive corner. Is there a shutdown is, yeah. corner? Let's see. I, in my mind, Darrell Revis is a yeah. shutdown corner, but he's not going to run that four three at the combine. Right. It's going to make him a top ten like Leon Hall from Michigan. Right. Uh, but I really love Darrell Revis, and I wonder what Pitt's going to do without him. Everybody wonders what they're going to do without Palco. Uh, the last two games, West Virginia and Louisville, each tried him one time exactly, one time. And uh, the one time it was a fourth and one, they thought they'd catch the great Darrell Revis napping. He intercepted it and then dropped it because it was fourth down. How many players do that anymore? Wow. You know, heads remember, up, yeah. when, remember when it wasn't such a savvy move to drop a fourth down interception because right, right. that's what you're supposed to do? Right. Well, well, guys think about their stats, too. Well, well NFL exactly. players, NFL and college athletes have lost some intelligence over the years. That's a fact. Yeah. Uh, for, for whatever reason, they just and don't. There's not as many heavy players. Goes towards know, bonus looking at money. I'm not looking at you. Don't okay. be so sensitive. All right. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and then Louisville went at Darrell Revis, and they're big men. They have a 6'6", Plexico-type yeah. uh, Rudia, a receiver. And uh, he got beat. He used wrong technique. It looked like he was expecting safety help, but he got beat. He grabbed the jersey, held him back from a sure touchdown, they called the they called the penalty. Darrell Reeves applauded the official. A real classy kid. And then uh, H.B. Blades blocked the field goal. So he saved seven points there. Mm -hmm. I really like Darrell Reeves as a player. Uh, so corner, pass rusher. Uh, now offense. How about offensive tackle? I, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with Marvell Smith. I don't know if that pinched nerve still bother him. He had a bad game against Baltimore. You guys might might know better, but uh, by my uh, untrained eye, he looked like he gave up three sacks. Uh, and Max Starks has struggled off and on. Uh, so, and the value for offensive tackle, they could get a real plum at drafting a 10 or 11 with an offensive tackle, and the value is going to be there. Um, Who are the big guys that stand up in your mind? Well, number one's Joe Thomas from Wisconsin. He figures to be top five. Uh, and then you've got guys like um, Levi Brown from Penn State. Uh, Sam Baker is a junior from USC. Watch USC coming up. Uh, Sam Baker, left tackle. And the other left tackle is Jake Long from Michigan, another junior. Kind of reminds me of Jimbo Covert. Not as polished and pass pro, but a, a real rugged run blocker. When he gets a hold of you, you, know, you get jerked around a lot. Uh, so offensive tackle is a potential position. Wex, um, you know, I've heard a lot of guys talk about the running back situation here and why wasn't the running back situation addressed more uh, in the off season, uh, especially if uh, you didn't see what you wanted out of Deuce uh, back in the mini camps. Uh, is, is the fact that um, the Steelers have always had that power, hard-nosed running back, does that make you think like that uh, the next year they need to go after one of those guys? Well, that's been their style, and they did chase T.J. Duckett a bit on draft day, and I thought it was a good move not to give away a first-day pick for a guy who's coming into the last year's right. contract. Right, T.J., he's, he's on a milk bottle this year. Hey, right, and you could probably get him in free agency right. this year anyhow. Right. So if you really, st if you still want him, yeah. I don't know that he has regressed. Right. Uh, uh, but I think Washington had backs that are better than they had expected, right. Liddell Betts being yeah. the guy. Uh, so uh, T.J. Duckett is a possibility. Uh, you know, there's a restricted free agent with the Giants named Brandon Jacobs. They're short well, yardage guy. He's a nice he's guy. Well, he's not. He's not. They're going to sign him. Yeah. They're going to, so especially with Tiki Barber. Uh, how about in the draft? Do we have any help in the draft from that? Not area? in the big back department. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, there, there's some thought that Adrian Peterson from Oklahoma could fall because he runs a little upright, but. Uh, does he have a steel rod in his leg, though? Well, he just – well, no, they're rumored. He he could come back. It's been oh. – uh, he could have come back. The, oh, the, the the coach just put the kibosh on it. So, I, I don't know. How bad off is he? I, oh, I'm, I'm thinking about the kid from Louisville. Bush has got a steel rod. Michael leg. Bush. Oh, Michael now, Bush. He, That's he, he's a about. big back. He's a big he back. A big I back. liked him. He said he's coming really like back him. to college next year. Uh, that would surprise me. 
Yeah. Well, maybe he can. He thinks he can be a top five guy with a good year. Yeah. Uh, I think he's a second rounder, high second rounder. As if, he's, is. if he declares for this year, as long as he passes medically. Mm -hmm. as now, if he out. comes back for another year though and has a big year, I mean, could he possibly be a top ten guy? Yeah, with his with his size and speed. Yes. He's, he's they so love big. his speed, his athletic agility, but you know, he's not a he's not a real physical guy. He's more of a finesse power guy. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And, and we were talking to one of the pit coaches about Michael Bush, and I, I brought that up. I said, you know, scouts don't consider him real physical. He goes, I know that, but you get a 260-pounder leaning on you all day. It's physical right. enough. Right. Right. Would you consider him more like a Ron Dane? <coughs> I mean, remember Ron Dane? Ron, Ron was a big guy, but you didn't see him running over people. Somebody on our website keeps making that comparison. I thought Ron Dane was attempted to run you over, but couldn't, whereas Michael Bush isn't isn't going to lower his head. He's going to juke you. He's a former uh, a big time parade All-American quarterback. So, I mean, he can even throw you the halfback option if you need it. And that's always a Steeler A little trickeration. I like that. that that's but I, I think a matter. second round back to consider is uh, Brian Leonard from uh, uh, Rutgers. Oh yes. Yeah. Now he doesn't do anything spectacular to get to warrant a first round pick. He's a, he's a type. I don't know if you remember Brad Muster. I do remember Brad. Muster. Right. He uh, you know they kind of wanted to make him a fullback, a tailback, and he even does the tight end uh, bunch thing. Uh, right. uh, so that adds to his. Uh, I mean, he does all the things the Steelers want in their fullback. Mm -hmm. Can even put, give you some tailback, but he's not a real. Uh, uh, hard-hitting lead blocker. He's not a pure lead blocker. So there's really nothing that makes him a first-round guy. But he can do so many things well, and he's so tough. Second round is potential. Yeah. All right. High now, second. Any, any sleepers like the Mar Marcus Colston? Uh, anybody out there that, you know, the big wide receiver? Yeah, who, who can find huh? But then hey, again. He's a guru. <laughs> he's he's really find them. <laughs> Could have you could have we're, we're going Colston. top dollar to get this guy. Well, Colston, <laughs> Colston went to the uh, uh, combine and he did well. And the Steelers did scout Ho uh, Hofstra. I mean, they ended up with a Hofstra player, so they should have seen him. Uh, and Marcus Colston wasn't uh, uh, an unknown because he was invited to the combine. Right. Well, Wes, thanks a lot. Appreciate the Welcome. insight as always. Uh, Thank you, guys. Uh, your new book is... Uh, Men of Steel. Men of Steel. The great, website is... Great Christmas gift. And the website is Steel City Insider. And Wolf is one of the uh, novice insiders. That's right, right, <laughs> Very novice. column once a week. And, uh, Wex I love every Wolf's day. column. All yeah. 35 words of it. Yeah. That's not Thanks for joining us, Wex. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Tony DeFazio from the Pittsburgh Sports Report right after this. I'm Tony DeFazio with the Pittsburgh Sports Report to get inside high school football recruiting, get inside the locker room with Punch and Luke.